NCL has repatriated 879 Filipino crew from its Norwegian Joy cruise ship. The crew left Aruba on March 4. They were flown via two company chartered flights and arrived at the Naia terminal on March 6 and 8. Norwegian Joy has been without passengers since March 15, 2020. Prior to the repatriation, the crew underwent a company-imposed quarantine for at least 14 days. CF Sharp, NCL's local money agency, has been in close coordination with the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C., and other government agencies in securing flight clearances, Bureau of Quarantine Certification on the mandatory facility-based quarantine, and other documentary requirements. The crew are currently quarantined in two hotels in Manila. NCL has further suspended its cruise voyages across its fleet through May 31, 2021. Russia has now recognized seafarers as key workers and begun giving them COVID-19 vaccination as a priority group. Danica Crewy Services Managing Director Henrik Jensen confirms that crew members are among the first to receive the vaccination in St. Petersburg. Russia, a transcontinental country spanning Eastern Europe and Northern Asia, is a major hub for seafarers. Of the about 1,500 seafarers deployed by Danica, some 500 are from Russia. Jensen advised that all seafarers joining through their manning agency will be vaccinated. High-ranking officials inaugurated the first four phases of the Puerto Princesa cruise port. The 1.5 billion peso project has seven phases, including the construction of a 500-meter wharf, docking facility, passenger terminal, and access road. Public works and highways to the Barbilla says the next three phases of the cruise port is expected to be completed in August this year. The port is designed to receive big international cruise ships that will bring more tourists to the city and province. Other officials who grace the inauguration are Executive Secretary Salvador Bedialdea, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade, and other local officials. Puerto Princesa Mayor Lucino Bailon reveals the city's plan to construct a 5,000 capacity convention center. The city is also inviting investors to build hotels, commercial establishments, and a launching pad for Bay Cruise. Puerto Princesa is located in the western province of Palawan and is the westernmost city in the Philippines. It is famous for its crocodile farms, underground rivers, and dive spots. The Nigerian government has been taking actions to combat piracy and improve security in the region. Bloomberg reports Nigeria will spend 195 million US dollars and with the help of an Israeli security firm will deploy additional boats and aircraft to increase surveillance in the region. Nigeria terminated an agreement with a local security company that had been supplying boats to patrol the anchorage of Lagos. The government is now using its navy and the Israeli company Blue Octagon in obtaining new equipment as part of the increased effort. The new equipment are expected to be deployed over the next three months. Nigeria is a country in West Africa, bordering Niger in the north, Chad in the northeast, Cameroon in the east, and Benin in the west. Its southern coast is on the Gulf of Guinea in the Atlantic Ocean. The International Maritime Organization has expressed deep concern on the escalation in the number and severity of attacks on ships and crew in the Gulf of Guinea region. Up next, Marina issues COVID alert after employee tests positive. All women officers sail in India. Marina holds workshop to address MC issues. And industry pays tribute to Commodore Dante Jimenez.
The Maritime Industry Authority or Marina has released a COVID-19 alert for seafarers after one of its employees has tested positive for COVID-19 last March 6th. The seafarers who physically filed their applications for Marina examination at the EAD or Examinations and Assessment Division STCW office at the 4th floor Marina Central Office for the period of March 1 to 5 were strongly advised to monitor their health conditions and have themselves subjected to appropriate medical tests should they exhibit symptoms of COVID-19. The cautionary advice was posted on Marina official Facebook page on March 6 and was shared immediately by FBC Favors groups, but was deleted on the same day after it caused alarm and chaos to the stakeholders and the public. Marina Administrator Robert M. Pedrad instructed his staff to be specific with the advisory so that it would not cause alarm to the people. He said there should only be contract tracing on the identified window where the marina employee who tested positive for COVID-19 was assigned. In January this year, at least 15 individuals at the marina central office have tested positive for COVID-19. This included 13 personnel, one utility, one security staff, and the administrator himself. The Philippine Navy has rescued 16 passengers from a distressed water bunker in Caloya Island, Antique. Navy vessel BRP Enrique Jurado PC-371 conducted search and rescue operations of MD Rafi P after receiving a distressed call in the evening of March 6. The motor bunker was found dead in the water, 150 yards east of Caloya Island, with 16 persons on board. According to the boat, Captain Arbel Delizai, the motor bunker encountered problems with their propeller shaft, an engine that caused them unable to move for more than three hours. The boat and the passengers were turned over to the Philippine Coast Guard Burakai for proper disposition. The Crew Bar Facebook group continues to grow as it returns after it was shut down by the social media company in February 19. The group's account had over 90,000 cruise ship crew members already when it was shut down because allegedly it goes against the Facebook community standards on dangerous individuals and organizations. The crew bar was disabled amidst Facebook's announcement of its program of depoliticizing its platform for its nearly 3 billion users, as well as the banning of all news sources in Australia. The crew bar served as an emotional support group of cruise crew members from different cruise shipping lines and was created during the initial phases of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, the crew bar private group has more than 36,000 members and counting and is believed to soon be the largest page of cruise ships crew around the world. The Maritime Industry Authority or Marina has conducted a two-day virtual workshop with the maritime stakeholders from March 11 to 12 to address the AMSA issues. The European Maritime Safety Agency has been inspecting the Philippines since 2006, assisting the European Commission on the reassessment of the country's maritime education, training, and certification system. Countries like the Philippines, whose certificates are already recognized at European Union or EU level, must now be reassessed on a regular basis and at least within 10 years of the last assessment. According to the Philippine Seafarers Statistics provided by Marina on February 2020, there were a total of 189,127 COCs or Certificates of Competencies issued between 2015 and 2018. On the other hand, seafarers' statistics in the EU showed there were 30,615 Filipino masters and officers holding COCs and endorsements attesting recognition by EU countries valid in 2017. On its 47-page inspection report, released on January 15, 2021, 
on the results of its last visit on February 24 to March 2020, AMSA noted 13 shortcomings and 3 observations. 14 institutions were inspected then. On a previous interview with Marino World, Marina Administrator Robert M. Pedrad said the agency has been coordinating with the Commission on Higher Education and the stakeholders to help the agency in addressing the findings and that there are policies that need to be amended. Uh, in fact, uh, continues the uh, engagement I mean, with, and collaboration with other uh, maritime st stakeholders to help us in addressing the findings of uh, uh, the EMSA. Meron kasing findings sa mga maritime higher education institutions. So we coordinated with these maritime schools that has been inspected by EMSA to uh, immediately uh, um, address the findings. Uh, we have also um, some findings that involve the Commission of Higher Education. Na coordinate na nandarin na kami sa Commission of Higher Education. And there are policies that needs to be amended, uh, maritime, ma, ma, some, some mar, maritime circulars uh, that we have been uh, working on this one. Meanwhile, at the Maritime Stakeholders Workshop, Marina presented the AMSA findings for a key area. The participants who were from the maritime education, training, assessment, and mining sectors were divided into groups, worked on specific findings, and presented their proposed corrective actions. The International Maritime Organization, or IMO, and the Women's International Shipping and Training Association, or WISTA International, have launched the Women in Maritime. IMO and Worcester International Survey 2021. This is to examine the proportion and distribution of women working in the maritime sector, from support roles to executive level positions. The survey is part of a series of activities aimed at laying the groundwork for further discussions on how to build a more diverse workforce within the maritime sector, essential for a sustainable future. The data obtained by the survey will help build a picture of diversity and gender equality in the industry. The launch of the study follows the 2020 signing of the IMO Vista Memorandum of Understanding or MOU on promoting greater diversity and inclusion through enhanced cooperation activities in the maritime sector. The MOU was signed by IMO and Vista International, an international organization whose mission is to attract and support women at the management level in the maritime, trading and logistics sectors. The MOU aims to set a framework for both IMO and WISTA to promote gender diversity and inclusion as vital factors in providing a sustainable future for the shipping industry worldwide. According to General Kita Klim, IMO Secretary, empowering women fuels thriving economies across the world, spurs growth and development, and benefits everyone working in the global maritime community and beyond. India takes pride in making history in the world maritime with all women officers managing and commanding a ship. Mansuk Mandavia, India's Minister of State for Ports, Shipping and Waterways, virtually flagged off the all-women officers sailing on Mount Swarna Krishna from JNT Elite with birth Jevi on March 6. Swarna Krishna with IMO number 9414838 is an oil product tanker built in 2010 and is sailing under the flag of India. The journey is in celebration of the Shipping Corporation of India's Diamond Jubilee and also to commemorate the International Women's Day. Mandavia acknowledged the contribution and sacrifices of the women seafarers acting as an Indian ambassadors to the global maritime community. SCI chairperson H.K. Joshi says she was satisfied to have fulfilled her responsibility to the nation and all women in the world. Government officials and maritime stakeholders have paid tribute to Commodore Dante La Jimenez who died of aortic aneurysm at the age of 68 on January 29, 2021. 
family, friends, and associates in the industry were gathered together via virtual platform on March 9th to commemorate his love and great contributions to the industry. Cadante was a partner with most of, most of the agencies and most of the MHEIs for the reforms of the maritime education, transforming the maritime education to a regular practice, but to excel in the service that they have so provided. As I said, three attributes of Sir Dante, a distinguished naval officer, a bastion of leadership and a champion in the maritime industry, and a staunch crusader against corruption. He was really a man for, for others. Uh, he was dedicated not only to uh, the maritime industry, to maritime education and training, uh, in fact, to excellence in maritime education and training. But uh, we, we all know his uh, um, uh, many other advocacy, advocacies uh, in terms of crime and corruption and, and drugs and, and many other things. He was, he was a, he was a uh, renaissance man, if you will, in terms of public service. Yeah, it was Dante really who mentored us. Uh, itong person, uh, uh, kwa ng mga officers and uh, kwa ng mga ng PAMI. Thank you, Dante. It is an honor and a privilege to have known you. I shall always remember the laughter and the joy that you brought with you in any room that you were in. From the bottom of our hearts, we would like to thank you for the respect and trust accorded to him and his journey for a better life for the Filipino maritime professionals. May the Lord continue to bless, guide, and protect us all. We are with you in prayers for a stronger maritime industry. We hope to see you in better times. Thank you. It's really a life well lived. We continue to connect and we continue to our relationship even after Commodore Dante Jimenez. Even if he's no longer around, this is the best thing that we can do to keep his legacy alive. Dante La Jimenez was more known as founder and chairman of the iconic Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption or VACC. He was a graft buster of four presidents, Rodrigo Duterte, Fidel Ramos, Joseph Estrada, and Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. He was a prime mover of Bicol Autonomy Movement, seeking for a regional charter to fast-track progress in Bicol. He also co-founded Federalismo Alianza ng Bicol. Indeed, crusading was essentially Dante. In 1994, as Philippine Association of Maritime Institutions, PAMI president, he introduced several reforms that enriched maritime education and improved the quality of seafarers in the maritime industry. He organized the multi-sectoral task force to save the seafaring industry from a rainbow coalition of academic shipping firms and builders, seafarers, and more. Immersed in maritime as was his father, Jimenez served as president of Mariners Polytechnic Training Center, Mariners Polytechnic College's Foundation Legaspi, and Unlad Ship Manning and Management Corporation. Jimenez was a pillar of the maritime industry, a leader, educator, and innovator. Even if he was a Navy man, he shifted his students from NROTC to PCGROTC, the first in the country. He said it was right to support the Coast Guard primarily in search and rescue operations given more than 20 typhoons waged annually in our archipelago. Jimenez will be forever be remembered with his mantra. Sarong marinero sa kada pamilyang Bicolano, one mariner in every Bicolano family. Rian Bernard Balinis, a graduate of MPCF and now a marine officer, in his article, The Jimenez Legacy, says Jimenez served as a father not only to his own kin, but to the thousand students and graduates of MPCF.
and that he touched lives not by splendor or grand schemes, but by his humble.